Okay, so we're back with Claire, Charlie, and Jason. If you see the tops of people's heads, it's because we're all trying to read this. A brand new filing uh, was made today by Dominion. It's called an answering brief. David did a good job explaining it to us non-lawyers. But I'm going to read you some of what has never been seen before. It is more from the sworn testimony of Rupert Murdoch. There are others in this new filing, but I, I'm going to read you some of the verbatim from his deposition as quoted in this new filing. So it comes in this yeah. section. It says, it says, well, Fox does argue at times that its hosts were reportedly neutrally without endorsing any of the lies about Dominion. The record demonstrates the opposite. The hosts of the accused shows repeatedly endorsed the stolen election lies. Even Rupert Murdoch had to concede this point. Question. You are aware now that Fox did more than simply host these guests and give them a platform, correct? Answer from Rupert Murdoch. I think you've shown me some material in support of that. Question. In fact, you're now aware that Fox endorsed at times this false notion of a stolen election. Answer from Rupert Murdoch. Not Fox, no, not Fox. But maybe Lou Dobbs, maybe Maria as commentators. Question. We went through Fox host Maria Bartiromo, yes? Answer, yes, come on. Question. Fox host Janine Pirro. Answer, I think so. Fox business host Lou Dobbs. Answer, oh, a lot. Fox host Sean Hannity. Answer, a bit. All were in that document, correct? Answer, yes, they were. Question, about Fox endorsing the narrative of a stolen election, correct? Answer, no, some of our commentators were endorsing it. Question, about their endorsement of a stolen election. Answer, yes, they endorsed. Rupert Murdoch's deposition. The filing goes on to say, quote, there you have it. Fox Corp chairman Rupert Murdoch admitted under oath, as he had to once he finally faced the evidence, that the hosts of the accused Fox shows endorsed this idea of a stolen election. Um, Jason Johnson, you're nodding your head. I don't have words yet. <laughs> I, I, this, I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked. And it's so disingenuous. I, it's shocking it's so to read it in black and white. I, I, the think it's the the, the, I think it's just reading it yeah. in black and white. It's like, we're not crazy. They knew it was BS, too. Bill Barr knew it was BS. I think that's why we keep playing that clip that Claire and I can never get enough of. They all knew it was a lie. Right, right. And, and, and to try and throw this all on Lou Dobbs, right? Oh, no, no, he was the only outlier. He was the only person doing it. Or, or it, it's so disingenuous to argue. It's like, well, it wasn't our hosts. It was the guests and commentators. But your hosts were platforming those people. Like, your hosts were bringing those people on. Well, at the same time, texting amongst themselves that they don't think these people are sane or healthy. They say they're, they're nut jobs and they're dishonest and everything else like that. I mean, I, I, I don't know how legally... Fox can get out of this when this is your chief executive. But I do think it is it is very, very telling to me that, again, Nicole, as we were just talking in the last segment, it's not going to change a thing with how any of these folks operate unless they get hit with a fine that they somehow can't wiggle their way out of. And that that's what's disturbing. I wouldn't be surprised if you literally had more text messages and more information that comes forward that they knew they were lying, but they're not going to do anything different. You know, Charlie, what I keep thinking is we only know this because a voting system company has right. more rights than U.S. democracy. It has more rights than the, the, the Zelensky government of Ukraine. It has more rights than Democratic lawmakers. I wonder what you think about the fact that the vehicle for learning this is that a corporation, in this case Dominion, has the right not to be willfully and with malice defamed. Well, we got to be glad of that. Um, but what you are reading and what we are hearing uh, over the last uh, 10 minutes or so is devastating. It is devastating to Fox News to hear these acknowledgments from Rupert Murdoch, to hear uh, the, the testimony of Paul Ryan about what he said in real time to the Fox Corporation Board of Directors. And I ought to mention the last Thursday night, I spent the evening in a public forum with uh, former Speaker Paul Ryan at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And uh, we talked about this uh, beforehand. And um, he said, look, I, I can talk about my role on the Fox board, but I cannot talk about my deposition or about the Dominion lawsuit in any case. But I pressed him on the question of, you know, what is your responsibility as a member of the board of directors? When are you going to call out people on Fox? Because he hasn't done that. I wrote an open letter to him in Political Magazine saying, you know, Paul, if there's any moment you're going to step up, this would be it. 
Um, and now it turns out that at least in private, as a member of the board, he raised the question of his fiduciary responsibility to push back against these lies. So we're not just talking about text messages and emails between hosts who are, uh, you know, poking one another. We're talking about a member of the board of directors talking about his legal fiduciary responsibility to push back on the lies being peddled by this corporation in real time. Rupert Murdoch acknowledging that people that he and his company put on the air engaged in this kind of deception, this kind of slander and libel is devastating to Fox's case, which was never strong in the first place. But this is really a remarkable moment, and I'm going to be interested to hear what the legal experts think about this, because at least in my experience, it is very rare to get uh, to get sworn testimony from the CEO of a corporation and from a member of the board of directors that is so um, useful for the people filing the lawsuit, for the plaintiffs in this case. We're scrambling the jets to get some lawyers on, on but let, let me let me probe this this area because I think it's disgusting that Paul Ryan didn't see democracy as a suitable victim, that Paul Ryan didn't see his own party and his own voters being wasted and sort of cannibalized in service of, of this big, uh, you, you know, what the right did to people on the right who left the Republican Party when Trump descended the escalator is make us feel like witches and yeah. kooks. Paul Ryan is disgusting to me that it was his fiduciary duty that gets him to start sending yeah. emails and retaining counsel. That's appalling. In some ways, that's more appalling than the ratings craven anchors themselves, Charlie. Well, I, mean, I asked him about a number of things. I, sa I said, you know, first of all, um, uh, you should have spoken out when Tucker Carlson began spreading these openly racist uh, theories, like the replacement theory, when uh, Fox News was uh, undermining democracy by spreading the big lies about the election, when Fox News was spreading disinformation about the, the pandemic that was costing human lives. So if, if uh, the overt racism attacks on democracy and disinformation that is causing people to die. If that's not a red line, what is? If this is not a time to speak out, when would you do it? Um, and um, I think there was a rather, it was a rather tense exchange, um, and now we're getting a little bit more uh, information that he was able to raise it on the board, but you're right. At some point, if you want to be a thought leader, if you want to be a political leader, if you want to you put yourself forward as somebody who is saying, we need to reject these, these, uh, th this deception, at some point, you need to say this in public. You need to come out. You need to lay your job on the line. You need to say, OK, the check I get for being a member of the Fox board just is not worth it. You know, it is just not worth it to do that. And I think a lot of people are going to have red faces after this. Claire, when um, there's a bullying incident in a school, um, the bully isn't the only one that gets suspended. Anyone who saw it, anyone who witnessed it and did nothing is in the same amount of trouble as the bully. Paul Ryan saw it and did nothing. Rob Portman saw all of the lies being peddled to the Republican base and still does nothing. Mitch McConnell did more than nothing. He's in for Trump 2024, and a Fox News poll says he's the most likely nominee. These crimes against the truth are ongoing. What is the potential for a $1.6 billion lawsuit to change anything? Well, first, let me explain a little bit about this pleading. One side, after you do some discovery, then one side says, we want a summary judgment. Our evidence is so strong, we want the judge to say, you win just by the evidence you've compiled. The other side says, our evidence is so strong, you have to dismiss this case without a trial. And that's a motion to dismiss. That's what these two sets of pleadings are. They're the countering arguments for, yes, we have enough for a summary judgment on Dominion, or no, we have enough for you to dismiss the case on the part of Fox. The problem Fox has is that Dominion has gathered a lot of damning information about what the facts were. Now, here's the interesting thing that Rupert Murdoch is doing. He's trying to say, oh, these were commentators. In other words, this was opinion. Let me just make sure that the, here's what a lawyer would do to the jury. You know what opinion is? Opinion is saying, you know, Russia had the right to, to, to declare war against Ukraine. Lying is saying there's no war in Ukraine. 
Opinion is saying Donald Trump is a good president. Lying is saying the election was fraudulent. And they not only still have Maria, what's her name, on the air still, they were putting Sidney Powell on the air after they all said she was a fraud and a liar. They were putting her out there as if she was credible. So it is really, I think, um, a stretch for Rupert Murdoch now to try to hide behind some, I mean, this is not called Fox Opinion, it's called Fox News. And commentators do have the right to go a little further, but it is not, they don't have the right to lie. They have the right to opinion. And there's a big difference between those two. And it looks like to me, Dominion's on the path to being able to prove that distinction very, very well.